Today we will explore what the Bible says about cremation and understand whether there is a basis for salvation for those who choose this method. In recent years, cremation has gained popularity in the U.S. According to data from the National Funeral Directors Association, the U.S. cremation rate surpassed 50% in 2016 and continues to rise. But before we dive into what the Bible says about cremation, let's understand why so many people are opting for this method these days. Imagine yourself at a crossroads between tradition and modernity. On the one hand, we have the ancient practice of burial, seen as an act of respect and reverence for our loved ones. On the other hand, the growing trend of cremation emerges. Hey, have you ever stopped to think that for the first time in history, an increasing number of people are opting for cremation over traditional burial. According to experts, this trend will only increase in the coming years, with estimates indicating that up to 70% of people may prefer cremation over burial in the next 10 years. Given this reality, an important question arises. Should Christians consider cremation? This video aims to explore this question from a biblical perspective answering four fundamental questions that frequently arise. Subscribe to the channel and leave a like before we get into these four questions. Let's go. What exactly is cremation? Cremation is a process that involves applying heat at high temperatures to a corpse, resulting in the vaporization of most of the body and leaving only bones, which are then reduced to ash. But what does the Bible say about this process? It reminds us that we were formed from the dust of the earth and to the dust we will return, which suggests that cremation can be seen as a return to the original state of the body created by God. In the next topics, we will explore more deeply the implications of cremation in light of God's word and answer the remaining questions about this very relevant subject for Christians. Let's delve into the environmental and social impacts that accompany the choice of cremation in contrast to traditional burial. Data provided by the Association of Crematoriums reveals an intriguing phenomenon. A steady increase in preference for cremation reflecting social changes, economic constraints, and ecological concerns. In fact, more than 50% of Americans now prefer cremation, a trend that appears to be gaining momentum over time. In addition to being a more popular option, Cremation is seen as a more scientifically sustainable alternative compared to traditional burial. While conventional burials consume vast areas of land and involve the use of embalming chemicals, wooden coffins and tombstones, cremation requires less space and resources. This practice aligns with the growing desire for more ecological and sustainable approaches. In addition to environmental considerations, Cremation also reflects changes in cultural and religious norms. While some traditions see cremation as a form of purification and liberation, others seek guidance in sacred scriptures, such as the Bible, to understand this practice from a spiritual perspective. When it comes to cremation, an intriguing question arises. What does the Bible have to say about it? Exploring the pages of the Old Testament, we find a direct absence of mentions of the practice of cremation. In more than 200 occasions where death is discussed, traditional burial emerges as the predominant method for disposing of bodies. However, it is important to note that the lack of explicit mention of cremation does not imply a prohibition or endorsement of the practice in the Bible. Analyzing some biblical events, such as the defeat of Saul and his sons by the Philistines, we observe the burning of bodies as a practical measure in the face of adverse circumstances. In this context, the burning of the bodies and the subsequent burial of the bones under a tamarisk tree in Jabes reflect a solution found given the particular conditions of the time. Another intriguing example is the account of King Josiah in 2 Kings, where he orders the burning of human bones on the pagan altars at Bethel. Although not directly related to the practice of cremation as we know it today, this act illustrates the manipulation of mortal remains in a religious context and the symbolism of fire in purification and desecration. In short, although the Bible does not offer explicit guidance on cremation, 
Its narrative provides valuable insights into the way ancient people dealt with the dead and how these practices were shaped by the cultural and religious circumstances of the time. The decision to burn the bodies was made due to the impracticality of holding a traditional burial. In 2 Kings 21, Manasseh is described as sacrificing his own son in fire, as well as engaging in practices such as sorcery and divination. At another time, Josiah, in 2 Kings 23, orders that the bones be removed from the tombs and burned on the altar in Bethel as a way of desecrating the place. These actions, although not explicitly related to cremation as we know it today, highlight the manipulation of mortal remains in religious contexts and the symbolism of fire in purification and desecration. From a scientific point of view, cremation has been studied for its effectiveness and environmental impact. Archaeological and anthropological research reveals a variety of funerary practices throughout history, some involving the burning of bodies. These studies also highlight the cultural and spiritual complexity associated with the handling of human remains. In the passage from Numbers 1916, we find a ritual prescription that outlines how contact with a corpse imposes impurity for seven days. This excerpt emphasizes the view of death as an event that requires a process of purification. Interestingly, although cremation is not explicitly mentioned in the Bible, this leaves room for interpretations and adaptations within the Christian faith. On the other hand, contemporary science offers a new perspective on cremation, especially with regard to environmental preservation. Comparative studies between traditional burial methods and cremation highlight how the latter can be seen as a more sustainable alternative, reducing the environmental impact associated with the use of land for cemeteries and the decomposition of bodies, which releases methane, a potent gas, greenhouse effect. Thus, the discussion about cremation, intertwined with biblical reflections and scientific discoveries, transcends the simple question of the disposition of mortal remains. It raises fundamental questions about purity, memory, identity, and spiritual continuity. In the contemporary context, the choice between burial and cremation is influenced by a variety of factors, including religious beliefs, environmental concerns, and individual desires. Therefore, the ongoing dialogue between faith and science shapes funeral practices, demonstrating a balance between respect for tradition and adaptation to the ecological needs of the modern world. Now let's explore the third, much debated question, how does cremation impact our resurrected body? What does the Bible reveal to us about our glorified bodies? In 1 Corinthians 15, we find a reflection on the resurrection, highlighting the transformation of our earthly bodies into spiritual bodies, indicating the continuity of life beyond physical death. So this question is often raised. How will God reunite my body if I choose cremation? It is worth mentioning that in the beginning, God formed humanity from earth and dust. If he used these elements to create man, is it not reasonable to think that he could also use ashes to recreate our bodies? This is the first reflection to make. Furthermore, when we consider the different ways bodies can be destroyed, whether by predators, accidents, or tragedies, God is not limited by these circumstances. His ability to recreate our bodies is infinite. However, it is crucial to understand that over time, all bodies decompose into ash. Soft tissue decomposition can take longer than we think. The process can then take months or even years until only a skeleton remains, a stage known as skeletonization. Ultimately, the complete decomposition of skeletons into powder can take decades or even centuries depending on the conditions of the soil where they were buried. Depending on how long someone remains lifeless, it is certain that they will end up turning into dust. The crux of the matter is that God's ability to recreate a glorious body is not restricted by the way our bodies are arranged after death. Scientific research on decomposition shows that this process is influenced by a series of factors such as temperature, humidity, and the presence of microorganisms. These studies are supported by research in taphonomy, 
the scientific discipline that investigates the processes of decomposition, fossilization, and preservation of organisms after death. They describe how the human body breaks down over time into simpler components, eventually integrating back into the soil. This process can vary considerably in terms of duration. Furthermore, the scriptures offer comforting insight into the transitory nature of physical existence and the promise of eternal life. In the passage from 1 Corinthians 15, 42, 44, Paul addresses the resurrection of the dead emphasizing the transformation of the corruptible body into the incorruptible. He compares the sowing of the body in dishonor with the glorious resurrection and the initial weakness with the refreshing resurrection. These verses highlight the Christian belief in eternal life beyond physical death promised to all who believe. A relevant point discussed in this video is the choice between cremation and traditional burial. This decision involves several personal and family considerations. It is essential to reflect on the type of farewell desired and how it will impact loved ones. Some may prefer a grave as a place of remembrance, while others opt for a more intimate and simplified ceremony. Additionally, logistics for family members must also be taken into account, especially if there are relatives who need to travel to the memorial service. Cremation can offer more flexibility regarding the timing of the tribute, allowing family members to gather according to your availability. Although the Bible does not directly address cremation, many interpret it in light of Christian principles, seeking to honor the body as a temple of the Holy Spirit even after death. Although death is an inevitable journey, we often wonder about the fate of our bodies after death. In 1 Corinthians 15, 42, 44, Paul guides us through reflection on the resurrection of the dead, highlighting the transformation of the body, corruptible into incorruptible. This Christian teaching leads us to consider cremation as an alternative to traditional burial. While some strands of the faith initially disapproved of cremation, arguing that it could interfere with the resurrection, many of them revised their positions over time. The Catholic Church, for example, officially allowed cremation from 1963 onwards, as long as faith in the resurrection was respected. This decision, however, continues to be an issue for personal and community reflection. The scriptures remind us that we are dust and to dust we will return, Genesis 3:19, but they also offer us the hope of eternal life. Cremation, carried out with respect and honor, is seen by many as a valid option within the Christian context. Regardless of the choice between cremation or burial, the heart of the matter lies in respecting the body as a temple of the Holy Spirit. Jesus did not directly address this issue during his earthly ministry, but his message of love, forgiveness, and hope resonates in our reflection on life and death. May this debate lead us to a deeper understanding of our faith and inspire us to live in accordance with the teachings of Christ. To conclude, I invite you to subscribe to our channel to receive more relevant content like this. Don't forget to leave your comment below sharing your opinions and experiences on the topic. Your participation is essential to further enrich our community. See you in the next video, and may God bless you.